Hello children, a very pleasant morning to you all. Yes, welcome back to your English class. And today we are going to deal with a new unit that is where there is a will. I hope you can complete this proverb, right? It's a very famous proverb where there is. Can you see there, there, apostrophe S, children? Can you see this? Yes, it's called as apostrophe, okay. So this is read as where there is, okay. Here apostrophe S is nothing but there is a will. Then the completion of the proverb is there is a way. Here will means the determination we can say, okay. The dedication towards whatever the goal it is. For example, if you have any goal or aim in your future, if you want to become something in your future, it doesn't mean that you just have to answer to the question the people who are asking you, right children? You, it means whatever you are telling that what you want to become in the future, you have to work for it, right? You have to be like dedicated, focused on the aim, whatever you have decided, then only you can reach your goal. So. So they are saying that wherever there is a will, if you have that will power to uh, do or reach that goal, of course there will be a way for it, right? Or, or means you will get a solution or a way for your uh, what you call the goal what you want to reach. But will power should be very strong. Okay, so you have to do something. Uh, you should find a way to accomplish it regardless of obstacles. Here obstacles means you may face many problems in between and all but it doesn't mean that it's the last you have to face this problem and find the solution for that right instead of crying over the things and all you have to find a solution and just keep on moving because your uh, what you call motto is to reach your goal not to uh, what you call face all these uh, what you call small small problems and all right you have to find a solution for that and keep moving to reach your goal okay children so that's what uh, today's unit we start uh, over with. So that is where there is a will, there is a way. So here in the first page, you can see uh, it's page number 52. I want you all to keep the page number book in front of you, the page number 52. And uh, we have a small activity over there to do that. You will just first complete this part and we keep on moving. Okay. So I'll read from the part, first uh, sentence itself. So where there is a will, there is a way it's a proverb so what is a proverb it's a well-known phrase or a sentence that gives advice or says something that is generally true so almost the proverbs what they say children they are almost the truth of the life right so it shows uh, means it has a very deeper meaning when you uh, listen to that so the proverb is a well-known phrases or sentences that gives advice or say something that is generally true <clears throat> In your opinion, so we have a small activity over here. In your opinion, which of the following options conveys the correct meaning of the proverb where there is a will, there is a way. So here they have given three options children, which suits the above proverb that is where there is a will, there is a way. Means uh, you have to choose the proper sentence which suits the above proverb. Okay. See, if you wish, you can make a road for yourself or wherever you find a will, there will be a road for you. <clears throat> if you really want to do something, you will certainly be able to find a way for, of doing it. So which options, option out of these three suits most children? Yes, the third one, right? If you really want to do something, <clears throat> you will certainly be able to find a way of doing it so obviously when you have that willpower of dedication to, uh, to, to uh, reach your goal you will find yourself a way for that right that is what actual uh, the meaning of the above so proverb conveys right so look at the descriptions the words given below and tick those which can help you to find out your way and make you successful so if you want to reach your goal what are the things that you require so should children should you be nervous means tensed no right nervous it's the wrong thing we can't write resolute yes resolution should be there a promise should be there that yes you you have to promise yourself you have to make a promise to yourself that yes i have to go reach the goal and any obstacles it may come i have to face it right you are shaky shaky means again you can say that <clears throat> you are a bit uh, 
what you call bit tensed here we can say right um, then comes doubtful no you know doubt we should not be doubtful right you have to have a confidence in yourself right we should not be doubtful then calm yes i agree with this calm you have to have a peace of mind see when you are doing something or want to reach your goal it doesn't mean that you have to be like nervous and all you have if you keep yourself calm you will get lot of solutions lot of uh, what you call ways to come forward anxious anxious i don't think so you have to be your then comes strong willed yes you are power yes you should be very your will power should be very strong okay then focused yes you should be focused on your goal confused no right we should we should not be confused confident yes timid means should be uh, like uh, what do you call coward like timid is something but be being a coward okay don't know then you should not be there excited yes enthusiastic yes so i say i repeat once again which are the things that you need to reach your goal now one is resolute optimistic calm strong willed focused confident excited enthusiastic okay and children you can see in the next page it is actually you have to do this okay but i will read it for you you have to tick the prop correct option what you will do in that situation okay if you were put in that situation what will you do have you ever tried to analyze yourself means have you ever uh, checked yourself okay do you face a situation readily or do you try to avoid it avoid means uh, to hide from that okay if you want means if you have faced any problem some people will face it and uh, find a solution okay but some people what they will do they just hide themselves from that avoid the, the problems as if uh, Uh, they have not at all done the that particular thing in that way. Just, just avoid it, right? What do you do in the following situation? Take the, your choice. When you make a mistake, do you? So if you have uh, you have done any mistake, will you admit it or hold someone else responsible? Admit it means will you say yes, I have done this mistake. Sorry for that. Or you say will you blame on others? No, ma'am, I have not done. It was done by so and so person. so what will you do you would have to uh, take the proper option there okay so when you see a person better than you for example some new, a new child has come to your class and uh, he or she is much more intelligent than you so what will you do you will learn from him or her or you will prove him to be inferior means will you start proving proving him yourself that yes i am much better than you blah 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 making all competitions and all Uh, revenge and all or will you just try to learn uh, from that new student who is very brilliant than you okay when you come across a difficult question a difficult question is asked by a teacher okay and what will you do try your best to find the answer or find fault with the question so you will try to answer the question means how much as possible or will you try to say that the question is wrong means you keep on keeping uh, finding the mistake in the question what will you do when you are unable to score good marks do you means for example this year you have scored very less mark so what will be your next uh, goal what will you do children whether you will work harder than before or you will just give up are kitna hi padho utna hi hai i will not get any marks and all will you think in that way and will you just stop your learning there or will you just work hard to get more marks when you find your teacher is not satisfied with your performance so your teacher obviously teacher will be observing you right so if she is he or she or is not happy with your uh, uh, marks and all what will you do try to improve yourself or complain about it complaining that telling that no i did not understand what teacher is saying and all or will you try to improve yourself what will you do children so you have to put the proper tick mark whichever you feel you will do okay so if if you have opted for the first answer to each questions you are determined to work hard okay so if you have ticked the first one in all the uh, questions it means that you are focused on your uh, goal you have a determination dedication towards your and you work hard but if the second answer is your choice in each case you need to improve yourself and change your attitude okay this is what uh, actually the it means after ticking you had to uh, understand what you are actually okay children so today Uh, we are going to deal with a new lesson that is limits of mind okay but uh, before that children we have certain words which you may have not uh, come across these words or you may have come across also but i just want to introduce these three words which you will help uh, be helpful for you while reading the lesson okay 
so see here the first one is the gurukul children gurukuls they are they are these are the old schools we can say okay in the olden days we all know that the kings what do you call their son means here uh, daughters were not sent to the gurukul and all only their son okay the king's son the, we call them as prince okay so they were sent to the gurukul away from the parents away from the palace okay and they had to the prince these prince has to stay with the stay with the gurukul in their uh, what do you call uh, hermitage we can say right in their ho home in the gurukul we can gurukul uh, they, there they had to stay in their hut and they have to serve for them serve in the sense they not only learning apart from that even they have they will serve like a, like a servant in their home like uh, uh, what you call bringing the wood from the forest to, to cook food uh, then bringing vegetables or fruits from the forest and all then cleaning the keeping the surroundings clean so these all works were done by these prince when they were sent to the gurukul it means that studying along with the do, doing your own work two things you will learn one is doing the work by yourself and second thing is you are you will be getting the knowledge also right both the things are uh, taking place together in the gurukuls so they are the residential homes we can say so a residential school where children were sent for learning where guru the teacher and shishya students would reside together at the place for as uh, many years till learning was complete okay till the, their their learning will complete they have to stay there with guruji uh, until their uh, what you call it, teaching process is completed okay then coming to the kuru kings to whom we call kuru kings here means we can see pandavas and kauravas we can say right here okay because i just don't want to go with a deeper uh, history of this kuru kings but i just want to tell you this about this because uh, now what the lesson we are dealing with we have these kuru, uh, kauravas and pandavas uh, which comes in the mahabharata if you have if you know the story of mahabharata or if you have seen mahabharata serial and all you will un must understand uh, understand much better okay or else ask your parents to show mahabharata or and ramayana in youtube uh, so that it will be helpful for you or ask them to tell the story of uh, mahabharata and uh, what do you call ramayana every day in tidbits okay in a small small episode to you while we, before you go to sleep you ask your parents children they will uh, help you okay so here kuru kings i can say you that the pandavas and, and kauravas pandavas are five in number they are yudhishthira bhima arjuna nakula and sahadeva okay and even we, we add karna also in pandavas but it is a different story uh, that uh, you, you can if you have, means when your parent will be telling you the story even they will tell about his this story also okay of course and kauravas are more than 100 actually so they come there like duryodhana dushasana dushyala and many are there okay means there are 98 uh, sons in kauravas whereas in pandavas only five are there and comes the another word that is hastinapur hastinapur is a uh, what do you call uh, city in the meerut meerut district okay in indian state of uttar pradesh and uh, it's described in hindu texts such as the mahabharata and the puranas as a, and uh, capital of the kuru kingdom is also mentioned in ancient jain texts hastinapur is located on the right bank of the of the ganges river okay so here uh, this these three i just wanted to tell you that because uh, we have the same words in the lesson so that it will be helpful for you to learn and we have these characters in this story one is dronacharya who is a guru guruji who teaches uh, the pandavas and the kauravas i said kuru kings right and uh, behind the dronacharya you can see he is arjuna dronacharya's favorite student favorite he is one of the most favorite student of dronacharya and the boy who is sitting down he is ekalavya they are not from the king family they are of low caste people okay low caste i hope you understand right and uh, dronacharya they do he do, doesn't teach uh, the people who are of low caste he only teaches teaches only for the uh, what do you call uh, kings prince uh, princes prince people and all okay means of high caste people they he he used to teach but ekalavya is a great disciple of dronacharya do drona hasn't taught him anything but he has learnt many things from dronacharya so let us see the same story we have in the story and i think you might have learnt about the ekalavya story in your kannada language or hindi language even because it is being told in the other languages and all so maybe you might have come across this story or if you have not come across this story 
i am going i am we have the story on the, today's uh, lesson in this lesson okay so just before the children as i always tell you we will have a ready session first okay first i will read it for you listen carefully and you have to read in the same style how i read okay now read the story of ekalavya who refused to accept accept defeat and surpassed the limits set by man and nature long ago a little boy called ekalavya was born in a poor family his family lived a little away from hasinapur the capital of the kuru kings they were shunned by the society because they belonged to a low caste ekalavya's mother would often say don't go near those people they are high born we low born are not supposed to mix with them why but why mother ekalavya asked he could not understand this discrimination god set these limits god but why would god want nice things for them and bad things for us hasn't god made all of us equal she sighed i don't know but there are bounds we can't cross ekalavya became quiet from that day the only important thing for him was to understand the meaning of limit one day ekalavya saw beautiful chariots coming into the forest near his village he saw boys of his age get out of the chariots last an old man with snowy white hair came out looking stern but calm ekalavya heard his father's voice those are the kuru king princes with the great teacher drona the boy he has just patted in his is his favorite arjuna they have come to practice archery don't go near them the boys started shooting with bows and arrows what amazing things arjuna did he could shoot at a target with a closed eyes he could shoot with his left hand as well as the right hand and the teacher drona's arrow made fire chased things in circles brought rain and lightning it was magical the practice ended ekalavya went up to drona and with a folded hands said great sir please teach me this magical art i don't teach the low born drona replied coldly and turned away master your arrows don't seem to mind any limits they bring rain and fire they do wonders how then can you be bound by the thoughts of high and low birth saying this ekalavya walked away from a glaring drona the very next day ekalavya carved a statue of drona from a tree trunk each day he would bow before the statue practice shooting and imagine a pat on his back from drona the royal princess and their master came to the forest again after a few months as arjuna got ready to take him aim at the particularly difficult tar- target an arrow reached his target before he could ever, ever even re-aim shocked the boys and the teacher looked around they saw ekalavya who went up to touch drona's feet who is your teacher drona asked ekalavya quietly led him to the statue drona looked at it for some time and said if i am your guru give me my fee my guru dakshina ask sir bowed ekalavya i want your right thumb replied the stone hearted drona without the right thumb to support it how can any archer ever to hold a bow as arjuna and the other princes watched in shock ekalavya cut off his right thumb wordlessly and laid it on at drona's feet many years passed a great battle was going on in kurukshetra between the kauravas and pandavas but as fate had it the great master drona was fighting against his favorite pupil arjuna after the day's battle a sad drona was sitting in his camp suddenly like a respectful prayer arrows fell near his feet one after another he looked up and saw the young ekalavya master i have learned to shoot without my right thumb i can shoot with my left hand and with my feet 
I have taught others and raised an army. Today I am known as Great Archer. Drona was speechless. Master, I set your greatness from free the limits of your own mind. Your great love for Arjuna crossed the limits of fairness when you asked for my thumb. But this made me learn to shoot with both the hands and feet. And for this lesson, I offer my service to you in this battle. Drona's eyes filled with tears. He answered, Yes, it is true. Bounds and limits are in the mind. Real courage is fighting against wrong limits and respecting the correct ones. Ekalavya, you have taught me a great lesson today. So I hope you all have listened to the lesson carefully, right? Children, when you read, na, you should not have like a mother tongue effect and all, be saying, oh, uh, and all in, okay, while reading. So just keep on reading. You just have to follow the punctuations and then you have to read, okay? I hope you listen to the, my, the way I read and I hope you will follow the same, okay? So let us see what does the lesson mean all about. Before that, as we always do, let us know the meanings of few words okay so you have, have some words with the meanings shun we have got this word shun there right means to avoid means they are kept away they are not supposed to mingle up with anyone here shunned archery means a sport of shooting arrows and bows it's a shooting uh, with the arrows and bows billu bana what you say right mm. then comes glaring an angry state carved to shape, to sculpture effect, discrimination, distinguish, side, to grieve, chase, to follow, coldly, in an uncaring manner, fate, destiny or fortune, stern, severe, speechless, not speaking, bound, to certain, courage, bold. Okay. So, before, because it will be helpful for you to really understand the paras and all when I am telling the lesson. Okay, then shall we start? Limits of the mind. Long ago, a little boy called Ekalavya was born in a poor family. His family lived a little away from Hastinapur, the capital of Kuru kings. They were shunned by the society because they belonged to a low caste. I hope you understood what is this. So here is the family of uh, Ikalavya. He is very, he is a very little boy, small boy and they were, these family, they were very poor and they were, they were of low caste. So they were shunned, okay, by the society, by the people. Means they were kept away from the city Hastinapur because of the, because they were of low caste okay i had told you what is hasinapura children it is a place it is a city which is very near near in the mirror district in up uttar pradesh right so it is a capital of kuru kings also they were shunned means i told you they were avoided they were kept away from the society because they should not touch people they should not speak to people and all for that reason they were kept away from the uh, city that is hasinapur because of the low caste Ekalavya's mother would often say, don't go near those people, they are high born. We low born are not supposed to mix with them, right? In those days, children, but nowadays I don't think so, we have such kind of uh, environment, okay. But uh, children in the ancient days, previous uh, olden days and all, uh, the low caste people and all, they were not allowed to touch people and all. These all things were, were in practice and all. But nowadays, we don't have, of course, it's all about our mindset, how we keep uh, keep the right children. So here, Ekalavya's mother would always, she, he used to advise, she used to advise her son that don't go near those high caste people, high born people and all, you should not touch, to touch them or you should not speak with them or you should not go and play with them. So these were the common advice which was given by Ekalavya's mother. Because if she, he will go and play, then obviously again they have to face some problems, right? They have to play, face some, what do you call, consequences which will may help uh, be bad for their survival also. So for that reason she is to always keep on telling her son not to go to them or play with them. So then here but the small child he was not understanding this. He used to ask why but why mother Ekalavya asked he could not understand this discrimination. Discrimination means showing the difference here okay it means showing that of high caste low caste making a differentiation. In that way, he was not understanding the meaning. What is this? 
then she says god set these limits so she said it is not done by anyone it is all done by the god he has set this limits that we have should not go there and all limit limit means the rules and regulations what we can it was set by the god she says god but why god want nice things for them and bad things for us hasn't god made all of us equal then he asks how can god yeah god see god has made every one of us equal then why he will do this why the nice things should happen to them and bad things should happen to us so this was the question why the god will do all these things then she sighed because she was uh, what do you call fed up with the uh, ekalavya's questions right because he was continuously asking regarding this uh, why this and all so she sighed she sighed means doing there this na we'll say na of we'll say in that way it is she was really fed up with his questions then she finally said i don't know but there are bounds we can't cross so there he says there are some rules and regulations uh, there are some certain values and all that we have to we should not cross the values whatever it was so whatever uh, it was being uh, done by the god ekalava became quiet now he was like really now he was in a, a question mark was there in his face what is this limit actually i just want to know the meaning of this limit he was in search of the meaning of this limit from that day the only important thing for him was to understand the meaning of limit one day ekalavya saw a be- saw beautiful chariots coming into forest near his village he saw boys of his age get out of the chariots so one fine day when he was sitting silently he saw many chariots it came very near to the their village which was there was a forest and there they had come and from that they got down many boys and they were all of almost ekalavya's age that means they were all say of same age then and he saw boys of his age get out of the chariots last and old man with a snowy white hair came out like looking stern but calm so at the last got down dronacharya to whom we say who was a guru of these kuru kings as i told you children in before it's right these prince all these are the prince or princes of the uh, who are of the kings and all we can say right so uh, and the the white uh, snowy hair one he was the guru ji that is dronacharya and he looked very stern he was very severe and uh, and he was like calm also so ekalavya heard his father's voice those are kuru princes with their te- great teacher droda the boy he has just patted is his favorite arjuna as i told you children in the beginning itself arjuna was dronacharya's favorite student okay so he just patted patted means as a, uh, see when when you do good thing right your parent or your teacher will come and pat at your back very good boy right it is called as patting so here the same thing uh, arjuna did and he said so can you see uh, dronacharya he is patting a boy there he he is his favorite student arjuna he just he was just describing telling about uh, them to his son they have come to practice archery don't go near them again the say word from his father also see they have come here to practice okay you should not go near them or touch them the same thing was told by who ekalavya's father the boy started shooting with the bows and arrows so you can see okay the boy started shooting with the bows and arrows what amazing thing arjuna did so arjuna had different talent right he was bit different from others he 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 could shoot the arrows with a closed eyes with a closed eyes so he, that's the reason that why arjuna was the favorite student of drona actually so he uh, he could shoot at the target with the closed eyes he could shoot with his left hand as well as right and the teacher drona's arrows made fire chased things in circles brought rain and lightning it was magical children uh, if possible la uh, children if you watch this mahabharata and ramayana okay when the fight will be going on the opposite teams they will uh, shoot the arrow right i think you might have seen and when the two arrows will hit each other we have seen fire coming out rain coming out a kind of lightning will come out and all right so the same thing when dronacharya uh, was uh, what do you call shooting the arrows these all magical things were going on it was making fire it was chasing things in circle and it was bringing rain. rain and all and lightning also okay these things were being done uh, was happening with the dronacharya's 
what do you call arrow we can say the practice ended ekalave went up to drona and with a folded hand said great so please teach me this magical art then after the practice he just went near uh, dronacharya and he just begged what do you call he just bowed him as a respect we do right namaste sir and he said sir i even i too also want to learn these magic tricks from you can you please teach me so it was a question innocent question asked by ekalavya i don't teach the low born drona replied coldly and turned away see being a great teacher he said i don't teach low borns they are low born people low caste people right he said i don't teach low caste people and very in an uncaring way he just turned away and that's it master your arrows don't seem to mind any limits they bring rain and fire they do wonders how then can be bound by the thoughts of high and low birth saying this ekalavya walked away from the glaring drona so when he heard this uh, he just what he said sir when you uh, shoot the arrows right they doesn't have any limits right they can bring the rain they can bring fire and all everything they can bring it right but how come uh, then you have such a kind of thought of uh, high caste and low caste right means being a sir being a teacher he should not have that uh, differentiation he says and he just says says this word in front of dronacharya and go away from the glaring drona glaring means he was uh, dronacharya was in angry mood he just told it and he went off from there ekalavya then the very next day okay so what ekalavya did you know children he went near a big trunk of okay tree and the trunk na he carved carved means to make uh, that uh, figure ketan setra in that way sculpting he did on the tree trunk and he made the what you call a model of the dronacharya you can see in the picture right so it is a model of dronacharya ji and he does it and every day he is to go and bow him in front of him bow means like uh, we do no namaste in front of dronacharya he is to bow at this hut uh, his uh, what you call figure and he is to practice every day continuously each day he would bow before statue practice shooting and imagine a pat on his back from drona so after practice he is to imagine that dronacharya has patted him at the back patted i have told you right what is the meaning of patted the royal princess and their masters came to the forest again after a few months as arjuna got ready to take an aim at particular uh, target tar- difficult target the arrow reached his target before he could even aim shocked the boys and the teacher looked around they saw ekalavya who went up to touch drona's feet so here actually one fi- and one more day they came back to learn uh, their archery to the fo- same forest and uh, they ha- here arjuna was given a target to uh, what you call shoot and before he trying before arjuna was trying to shoot at it uh, before that ekalavya's uh, what you call arrow ha- will go and reach that target before arjuna and everyone was shocked because uh, this was possible only by who arjuna then he it was a second person who was more talented than arjuna here and who was he children yes he was none other than ekalavya right and everyone looked here and there and when they turned back they saw ekalavya there and ekalavya when he saw his guru dronacharya he went near him to uh, what do you call take uh, blessings from his uh, guru ji dronacharya then dronacharya asked him who is your teacher dronas asked ekalavya quietly led him to the statue right he just told sir come please come with me i will show you my guru and he took him to the statue that his own statue dronacharya statue only then drona looked at it for some time and said acha so i am your guru i if i am your guru give me my fee my guru dakshina then here he said acha i am your guru right but you haven't given me any fees for that so children for fees we called as guru dakshina in those days they used to give guru dakshina okay so he asked you haven't given me any guru dakshina then ekalavya sir of course sir whatever you want you ask i am ready to give whatever you ask in your guru dakshina he uh, he just told it openly in front of uh, dronacharya then you see what dronacharya said ask sir boda ekalavya i want right thumb replied the stone hearted drona very sad naturally very sad see when you want to hold the arrow right in the bow you need the help of this thumb thumb i hope you all know what is the thumb right the thumbs up they show this thumbs 
then he said uh, and it is very important for anyone to hold the arrow and keep it in the bow and uh, what you call stretch it right but he is asking ekalavya's right thumb do you know why children because arjuna he doesn't he don't want anyone to be superior than arjuna he did not want anyone in the world more talented than arjuna for that reason without any hesitation he just told can you please give your right thumb see what was the reaction by the other disciples there as arjuna and the other princes watched in shock like they were shocked to what guruji is asking because he is an archer right if you ask the right thumb then how can, how will he practice many more then when the question was asked everyone was in shock everyone just looked at each other and they started speaking how you are how if he gives his uh, right thumb then how will you fight these were the questions uh, going on but you know ekalya without thinking without thinking a second he just cut his finger and gave it to yeah in front and laid it in front of drona's feet okay children here in the picture has shown your dog there actually okay uh, it is not mentioned in the story but i will just try, try to tell you the actual story what ha- happens there okay so when they when they come for ne- next time to the forest for the practice children uh, so here dronacharya was will be wandering uh, in the forest okay then suddenly uh, the a dog starts barking at him continuously it's it will start barking though dronacharya will say shoo and all he will not stop barking at all and uh, suddenly ekal from far away okay by just by hearing the sound just by hearing the noise of the dog was ekalava will shoot many arrows at a time together and all the arrows will be in the mouth of the dog and suddenly the dog stops barking and the ekalavya was like shocked till now the dog was barking then what happened to this dog when he turned back to see that he saw the dog's mouth was full of arrows then he was in a great shock oh my god who has done this without seeing also someone has just what do you call throw this arrow in its mouth then when there actually it is a story but it is not mentioned here okay i just wanted to tell you about this so you can see here he ha- he just cut the finger and produce in front of dronacharya's feet then many years then after it was over but ekalava did not stop learning every day again he used to do he used to go to his uh, dronacharya's statue he used to bow and again he used to learn and you know children what what is a uh, new thing uh, ekalava has learned what do you call uh, shooting uh, this arrows without the thumb finger and with the right finger right hand and with the feet also even with the feet also he was able to uh, shoot nowadays so after many years many years passed a great battle was going on in kurukshetra between kauravas and pandavas so here actually what happened so after many years there was a fight between kauravas and pandavas okay i had told you that who are these kauravas and pandavas actually these both are cousins children but they had a fight actually there okay it's in kuru yeah, that it was in kurukshetra it is a place in haryana actually okay and uh, if i want to tell you that what is a battle children i hope you have, everyone of you have seen bahubali right everyone of you have seen the bahubali film right see there uh, pra, who is that bahubali with his team he will go to fight against uh, that uh, uh, that black person i don't know what is what is his, what was his name in that uh, story and have you seen the people the people how they were fighting how they were killing each other yes it is called as a battle okay uh, that is what is called as a battle actually it means the fight will be there between the two st- uh, two kingdom to and uh, many people will die in this uh, what do you call fight okay so but as fate had it the great master drona was fighting against his favorite pupil see once upon a time arjuna was dronacharya's favorite pupil pupil means student right but now actually dronacharya was fighting against ohahu arjuna he was fighting against him means opposite team means opposite team he was fighting dronacharya after the days battle a sad drona was sitting in his cap so one day the battle had completed and he was sitting silently because they were almost in a loss suddenly like a respectful 
prayer arrows fell near his feet one after another so it was like a respectful from far away many arrows it came and fell in front of dronacharya's feet he looked up and saw the ang ekalavya see and when he lo- just looked up he was none other than his uh, what do you call the great disciple uh, who ekalavya master i have learned to shoot without my right thumb i have i can uh, shoot with my left hand and with my feet also he says all these things so sir i have learned these many years to shoot without my right thumb and even i can I shoot my the arrow with my left hand also as well as right hand also and with my feet also he just told it everything then master i have learned to shoot without my right thumb i can shoot with my left hand and with my feet i have taught others and raised an army and apart from their children ekalavya has had started teaching other army other children and, and he has created his own army today i have i am known as a great archer drona watch speechless he was not having any answer because he knew that what he has done with dronacharya master i said the your greatness from free from the limits of your your own mind so you are great love for arjuna cross the limits of fairness when you ask for my thumb so he said the same thing see the, you said that you will not teach my the low caste people but today i am your great disciple and i am somewhere a great archer also because only for you and second thing was that you were not fair with me okay fair with me when uh, who in front of arjuna because you want to just prove that arjuna was the best in the whole world okay so there you did not show your kindness also so your great love for arjuna crossed the limits of fairness when you asked for my thumb but this made me learn because of that only children he started learning to use his left hand feet and all right children so he says because of this i have started learning from the using my left hand my and my feet and all and i could learn many more things then he says however you are my guruji so today i will uh, fight against your uh, what you call the opposite team he says clearly so with uh, which pandavas he is going to fight i am going to help you he says it clearly to his guruji dronacharya and for this lesson i offer my service to you in this battle then whatever i have learned i, have, I will help you through this uh, what do you call battle he says drona's eyes was filled with tears he really felt very bad because he was a person who ha- who uh, answered him very coldly saying that i don't teach the low caste people but today children this low caste fellow was in was helping this uh, in his in uh, dronacharya in their fight he answered yes it is true bounds and limits are in the mind real courage is fighting against your wrong limits and re- respecting the correct ones ekalavya you have taught me a great lesson today then he said everything is our mindset whatever we keep in our mind it is not uh, which is done by any god or someone else it's all about our mindset so in that way uh, ekalavya he says it you have taught me a great lesson okay children so after this your children uh, okay what you do is just uh, turn over the page and try to complete the a3 the rest i will send you the answers okay but i want you all to complete the a3 okay children thank you